Hello and welcome to Nitharanya YouTube channel. You're watching another episode of the Game in a Nutshell series designed for explaining the board game rules. My name is Branislav Beret, and in this video we're going to learn how to play a new game from Simone Luciani and David Terzi, Nucleum, published by Board and Dice. To set the game up, place the game board on the table with the side matching the number of players in the game facing up. This is the side for a three and a four player game, the other side is for a solo game and a two player game. Then place this sideboard next to the game board. Place these coal import wagon tiles showing the side with this minus one icon on the indicated spot of two coal production areas. In a three player game, leave this space empty. Place this victory point flag token under the space 70 of the victory points track. Separate these action tiles by their back. These are base action tiles. They have these two white dots on the back. Then there are action tiles with letters A, B, C and D. And there are two special action tiles with the yellow B letter. And each set A, B, C and D has one special tile with black back and all other action tiles without any dots or letters are, let's say, standard action tiles. Take the action tiles with letters aside for the moment and then take these 20 base action tiles and add 10, 15 or 25 of these standard action tiles in a 2, 3 and a 4 player game. And since I'm setting up a 3 player game, these 20 base tiles will be mixed with 15 standard tiles. And after mixing the tiles, create three roughly equal stacks and place one of these stacks on the designated space at the top of the sideboard and place the remaining two stacks somewhere near the game board. You can return the unused tiles back to the box, they will not be needed. And then draw the top five tiles from this draw stack and place them on these spaces. Then separate these contract tiles by their type. There are four initial contracts, then silver, gold, and three types of purple with one line, two lines, and three lines. Take the initial contracts and give each player one random contract. Then shuffle each of the remaining stacks and randomly take six, nine, or 12 silver contracts in a two, three, and a four player game. And similarly take 10, 12 or 16 gold contracts in a 2, 3 or a 4 player game. Return the remaining tiles back to the box. Then from each of these three purple stacks, take one tile from each stack randomly and place them face up on the matching spaces on this sideboard. Then draw first two gold and silver contracts and reveal them face up. Then shuffle these milestone tiles and place one of them randomly on each of these spaces on the sideboard. There are four milestone spaces and all these tiles are placed face up. Then place three nucleum tokens on these spaces. Then perform the map setup. Place this coal power plant on this space in Risa and the four remaining power plants on these spaces one of them is here and two remaining are over here. Shuffle these 13 setup cards, randomly choose one of them and it will be used to set the board up. These tiles with the black background are neutral urban tiles. Randomly choose one of these tiles and place it in this city shown in the first row of the setup card. So we'll take this tile and place it in the city of Leipzig. Preferably place it on one of these red spaces. Then take the fourth nucleum token and place it on the city stated in the second row. So here we have Grima, which is this city, so the nucleum token is placed in this power plant. Then in a three player game only, take these three turbine rubble tiles and place them on these turbine spaces. There are exactly three of them on the map. One of them is here, the other one here, and the third one is here. Then if you play one, two or a three player game, take five of these urban rubble tiles and place them in these spaces stated in the third line of this setup card. When you place these tiles, preferably choose the red space 
If the city is stated twice, like Praha here, you have to place two tokens in that city, and in case there would be no red space available, place it on a space with one icon only, and if you have multiple options, choose the leftmost or the topmost space. Then do the exact same thing with these mine rubble tiles and these cities in the last row of the setup card. This time preferably choose the space with no modifiers or with the least modifiers, and again preferably the red space. So in Karlsbad, for example, the preferred space with the least modifiers is this mining space. And when you have more options, for example here you have two empty spaces, you can choose any of them. Then repeat this urban tile placement three more times, which means take another setup card, reveal it face up, take the random neutral urban building tile and place it in a city displayed in the first row. Again, the preference is the red space. If the red space would be occupied, for example, if this urban rubble tile would be placed there, place it in a space with the matching icon, here it's the government building, and if let's say this tile should be placed in Leipzig and we would have this situation, if you have to place it in a space with the matching icon, choose the space with a single icon before you choose the space with two icons. If you have to place a tile in a city and there is no suitable space available in that city, choose another random tile. If you reveal a setup card with this symbol, skip the tile placement. The same applies in a one and a two player game if you reveal a card with this symbol for three or more players, or if you have to place a tile in a city and there are no empty spaces remaining, again, skip that placement. So once you place four neutral urban building tiles, return the remaining tiles back to the box, also with these setup cards. Place five end game condition markers in these spaces on the sideboard, and we'll move to the player setup. Each player takes one player board, four coins from the general supply, and all the components of one color. Place all building tiles and the mine tiles in the matching spaces, three income markers in the first space of each track, four turbine tokens in these spaces, and then take two workers of your color in your personal supply, and the remaining 16 meeples somewhere nearby into your reserve. For your first game, or several first games, the designers recommend that you start the game with three meeples instead of two. Then take your initial contract, which you have received earlier during the setup process, and place it in this space without taking this bonus. All players place the scoring markers on the zero space of the scoring track, and three milestone markers on these three spaces, and the remaining three markers somewhere near the game board. Randomly choose the starting player, and that player takes the first player marker, and then starting with the last player and continuing counterclockwise, each player chooses one of these experiments. With this experiment, take all the corresponding technology tiles, they have the same letter as the experiment, and they are numbered from 1 to 8, so arrange them from 1 down to 8. Then the corresponding turbine effect tile, which you place face up in this space on your player board. Then the starting action tiles with the same letter, and if you choose the experiment B, take also these two special tiles and all these action tiles are placed face up somewhere in your play area. Except for these two special tiles with letter B, they are only unlocked with this technology later in the game. And that's the end of this long setup and we're ready to start. Nucleum takes place somewhere in the 19th century in some kind of alternative history when Nucleum was invented, which has immense power generating capabilities, and so players are industrialists trying to build these industries and fulfill various contracts and score victory points. The game is played in turns, starting with the first player and then continuing clockwise. There are no phases, no rounds, players simply take turns until the game ends. On your turn, you must choose one of the following three options. You may either play an action tile from your pool 
and play it to the top of your player board and then perform one, the other or both actions from that tile. Or instead of that, you may choose one tile, one action tile from your pool, place it on any empty railway and perform actions from that tile or potentially from other tiles in the same railway line. Or the third option is to recharge. You will take income, take all the action tiles from the top of your player board back to your pool, which may trigger some interim scoring. The game continues like this until two out of five endgame conditions are triggered. And that is when this draw pile of action tiles is completely empty or the draw piles of these contract tiles are empty, or when all players perform the recharge action three times, so there are no milestone markers in this space, or when one player reaches 70 victory points during the game, or when any player discovers all eight technologies. In addition to the victory points you score over the course of the game, primarily from your income, you will score victory points from these milestones and based on the position of your milestone markers on this track, you will score victory points from this level three technology tile. Then you can score a lot of victory points from building these buildings and then supplying them with energy from the power plants. And you may also score additional victory points from the level of your income at the end of the game and from some leftover resources. Then the player with the most points is the winner. I'm going to explain all your main actions, main options on your turn in more detail now and we will start with playing the action tile from your pool to the top of your player board. Each player starts with five standard action tiles. If you have this experiment B, you also have two additional special tiles. They are only unlocked later in the game. Of those five action tiles, one of them is called the special directive, that's this one. And when you decide to play an action tile, choose one of those action tiles, place it to the leftmost empty space on top of your player board, place the tile in that space and then perform one or two actions from that tile. You can perform these actions in any order you want and both of them are optional. If you play this special directive tile, you can choose any of the five basic actions and you can play that action with a one coin discount. I will explain those five basic actions later in the video, but in a nutshell, with Urbanize, you will build these buildings on the map. With the Industrials action, you will place mines or turbines on the map. With the Develop action, you will gain more action tiles. With the Contract action, you will gain new contracts. And with the Energize action, you will deliver energy from the power plants to the buildings and score victory points and some immediate benefits from those tiles. When you play an action tile to the top of your player board, before you take those actions or after you take those actions or in between those actions, you may fulfill one and only one contract on this right side of your player board or you may fulfill one of these purple contracts from this sideboard. You can only fulfill the contract if you meet the requirements on the contract. When you do, you gain the rewards and then take the tile and place it somewhere in your play area. And with that, you make the space for additional contract later in the game. The second option on your turn is to take one of the action tiles from your pool and place it on the railway link. Then place one of your worker on that action tile. And after that, resolve the actions where the color on the edge of these tiles match the color of the city or the color of the adjacent tile. If the entire line has been completed, then all players with the workers on those tiles will get rewards. When you place the tile, you may place it in any empty space, any empty railway space on the map. However, that space must be either adjacent to the city or adjacent to any other previously placed tiles. Which means the only limitation is that you may not place it on this middle space if the entire line is empty. 
In that case, your newly placed tile would not be adjacent to any other city or any other previously placed tile. Cities are these colored areas on the map, orange, green, purple cities and also these white cities. This is also a city and Leipzig is a city and so on. There's one special city on the map, Praha. This city is the city of all colors. After you place that tile, you must place one of your available workers on that tile, which means you must have that worker available. If you wouldn't have any workers available, if you had any uranium mines on the map, you may discard one uranium and get one worker from your reserve into your personal supply area. This is also indicated on your experiment board. If you place the tile on this red space, you have to pay these two coins first and only then you can place the tile there. After placing the tile, resolve the actions where the color on the edge of the tile matches the color on the adjacent tile or the adjacent city. In this example, this edge of the action tile is orange, it matches the orange city, which means the yellow player may perform this action. In addition to that, this edge of the tile is white, it matches the white edge of the adjacent tile, which means the yellow player may perform this action. And in addition, the action on the matching tile can be performed as well. So in this example, the yellow player can also perform this action. If, for example, you place the tile here, you may perform this action because the city is white and the edge of the tile is also white. However, this action cannot be performed because the color of the edge is orange and the city is purple. If you place the tile here, for example, you may not perform any of those actions because the colors on those edges don't match at all. However, in this example, if you place the tile like this, you may perform the action here and also on this tile because the colors match. This is a wild color, which means it also matches. So you can also perform this action and the steel player can also perform this action. If those matching actions belong to multiple players, you resolve your actions first as the active player and then other players may resolve their actions in a clockwise direction. Again, all those actions are always optional. Finally, when you place the tile and with this placement, the entire rail line is completed, all players with the workers on that line will get rewards. Those rewards are printed in this area of the game board. If the completed rail line consists of two spaces, then each player with a worker on that line increases the income of victory points by two spaces. And even if there's only one player, that player only increases the income by two spaces. If two different players would participate, then both of them would increase their income by two spaces. However, if you complete a rail line which consists of three spaces, then you increase your income by two for each worker on that line. So in this case, yellow player would increase the income by four spaces, teal player by two spaces. After that, flip all those tiles face down, but keep the workers on the tiles. So let me now explain all those main actions in the game and we will start with the first one. This is a symbol for urbanize action. Uh, it looks like this on action tiles. And with this action you can choose any building from your player board and build it on the map. You can choose any of those buildings, but once you choose a building you have to pay the indicated cost for that row. So here you would have to pay four coins to build this building. And you can place it on any urban space in your network. Urban spaces are these square spaces with the black background. And now, what is your network? Your networks are groupings of cities and links with at least one of your components. When you look at this rail line, there are two players who own this line, yellow and teal, they both have a component here, so they both own it. 
The size of your network is the number of cities connected in that network. So, for example, for the yellow player here, yellow player has this city connected, then this link, the second city connected, and now this link, this line is not completed, so this city is not connected yet. So, the size of this network is two cities. The same is here. Yellow has this city and this one in this network. And if yellow player would build this link as well, then yellow would have one, two, three, four cities in one big network. These two cities are obviously not in the yellow's network because these links are not owned by yellow, they're owned by red. Now, if you had no network on the map whatsoever, you may build that building anywhere on the map, I mean, in any legal space. However, if you already have a network on the map, you can only build that building in your network. When you build a building, you must build it in a space with a matching symbol. Here we have the residential symbol, so you must build it in an urban space with the same symbol. If the city contains more spaces with the matching symbol, First of all, choose the space with single icon only. If no such space will be available, you can also choose the space with two icons. You can also build that building in the red space. If you do, you have to pay two coins, but as you see, there are no matching symbols requirements. There are three basic types of buildings, residential, factories, and laboratories. The level four of your buildings also contain this small white governmental symbol. So only those level four buildings can be placed, for example, in this kind of space. The second action is the industrials action. Again, those symbols on the action tiles may look like this. With this action, you may place mines and turbines on the map, basically using the exact same rules as for buildings. So you may choose any one turbine or one mine, pay the corresponding number of workers, which means you have to return the worker or workers from your personal supply back into your reserve, and then place the chosen turbine or the mine on the map. If you had no network on the map, you may place it on any corresponding space. If you already do have a network, you must place it on the space in your network. If you place it on the red space, you have to pay coins first. When you build these turbines, you unlock special abilities on your player board. And they are also very helpful when you want to energize your buildings later in the game. When you build mines, you immediately gain uranium. You gain uranium equal to the number of your mines on the map. In this example, yellow player has two mines, so that is two uranium cubes, plus any bonuses. If you build the mine on a space like this, for example, that would be additional uranium. If the action tile you use to take the action contains this plus uranium symbol, that would be another uranium. So let's say that would be fourth. And you may place this uranium in any of your mines on the map. Each mine has a capacity, either three uranium cubes, or these ones have a capacity of two cubes. So you may distribute these cubes any way you want. For example, three cubes over here, one cube over here. And remember, at any time you may spend one uranium and gain one worker. By the way, when you use this kind of action tile and you build a turbine, you still get that uranium. At the end of the action, if you have the turbine and the mine from the same row on the map, you immediately gain the reward. Here, one victory point immediately, two victory points, five, and this is level three technology. I'll talk about technologies later in the video. With the next action, the develop action, you may gain new action tiles. The develop action is this kind of symbol on the action tiles. When you take this action, choose any one of these five action tiles in the market, pay the indicated price, and the action tile goes directly into your pool. After that, as indicated by this symbol, you may pay two coins, and 
purchase another tile right away, paying the cost as well. So for example, if you want this one, you would have to pay two coins for the additional action and two coins for another action tile. Again, the new tile goes directly to your pool. Only then slide the action tiles in the market in the direction of these arrows and then refill the empty spaces with new tiles from the stack. If the stack is empty, take another stack which is next to the game board and when all these stacks are empty, then it triggers one of the end game conditions. The next action with this symbol is the contract action. It has this symbol on action tiles. When you take this action, you may take one silver or gold contract. You may never take these purple contracts. And after you take the contract, place it in an empty space on the right side of your player board. Immediately gain the bonus shown next to that space. If all your spaces would be occupied, then you may not take this action. Then replace the empty space with the tile from the corresponding stack. If the corresponding stack would be empty, replace the tile from the other stack. And if both stacks are empty, leave the space empty and it triggers another endgame condition. You can fulfill one contract per turn and you can fulfill the contract when you play an action tile to the top of your player board. To fulfill the contract you have to meet the requirements at the top of the tile, then you gain the rewards at the bottom of the tile and then take the tile and place it face down somewhere in your play area. Many of these contracts will give you technology as a reward. There are three types of technologies. These are level one with this symbol, these are level two and these are level three. When you gain a technology, for example with this symbol, you unlock the technology immediately with the level 1 you may choose one of these three technologies. When you gain a level 2 you may unlock one of the level 2 technologies or one of the level 1. Similarly with level 3 you can unlock any of your technologies which are not unlocked yet. When you unlock the technology slide the tile to the rightmost position. And when you unlock these blue technologies, these are immediate one-time rewards, so gain them immediately or otherwise they will be forfeited. These brown technologies provide ongoing benefits and the purple technologies give you victory points at the end of the game based on the conditions on that tile. You can find the full description of your technologies on your player aid cards or in the rulebook. And finally, the last action is the Energize action with this flash symbol, which allows you to supply your buildings or neutral buildings with electricity from power plants. With this, you can gain victory points at the end of the game and some immediate benefits. First, think about which building you want to supply with electricity and then which power plant you want to use. In order to generate electricity in the chosen power plant, you have to supply it with coal or uranium or both through any completed rail lines or through these pre-printed rail lines. These two coal import areas have unlimited supply of coal and they are connected with these cities with these permanent lines, permanent rail lines this area with this line and this line. But then you must build these rail lines in order to transport that coal to other power plants on the map. In this example, this power plant is not connected to any of these coal areas. However, let's say there is a connection here, which means you can import the coal from this area through these railway lines or even from this one through these railways. You can use any railways, completed rail lines, regardless of who owns those rail lines. Now, you can import any number of coal and for each coal you import, you have to pay the cost on the chosen tile. For example, here it's one coin and then immediately flip the tile to the other side. Then you can import another one again for one coin flipping the tile to the other side and you can continue like this and import any amount of coal. 
Later in the game, when you buy the coal from this tile, simply remove it from the game and there will be a permanent tile with a cost of 3 coins. When you take an action and the action gives you a discount, that discount is applied to the total cost, not to individual costs. Then, when the chosen power plant has this nucleum token, you can also import the nucleum. If it wouldn't have the token, you may not import that nucleum. You can only import nucleum from your own mines, and the number of these nucleum cubes you can import is 1 plus 1 for each turbine in this power plant area. So in this example it would be 1, 2, 3. Again, you can only import nucleum through connected railway lines, regardless of the ownership of those railway lines. And if you decide to use turbines of other players, for each turbine you have to pay one coin to that player. And again, if you take the action from the action tile which gives you a discount and you apply this discount to this nucleum, you don't use the coin from your supply, but the player gets this coin from the general supply. Then determine the amount of electricity you produce in that power plant. For each coal you import, you generate one electricity. For each nucleum you import or you use in this power plant, you generate two electricity. Once you build these turbines from your player board, during the electricity action it will automatically generate additional electricity, so that is another bonus. You may also gain additional electricity as a bonus from the action tile and potentially also from your technologies. After you calculate the total electricity produced in the power plant, then choose one building either one of your buildings, which is not energized yet, or any neutral building, which is not energized yet. The building must be connected to the power plant, again, through any railway lines belonging to any players. And you can only choose a building which requires the same amount of electricity or a lower amount of electricity that the power plant produced. In other words, in order to energize this building, you need to produce at least 6 electricity. If you want to energize this building, the neutral building, you only need to generate 2 electricity. So let's say we choose to energize this building. After you do that, you receive the achievement tokens equal to the energy requirements of that building. Here it's 6, so you would receive these achievement tokens. This is one achievement token, this stands for 5. Place these achievement tokens somewhere next to your player board. And you also gain immediate benefits from the tile. In this example you would increase the income of your workers by 3. Then flip the tile to the energized side and you will receive this number of victory points at the end of the game. Don't be afraid to energize neutral buildings. They may give you some boost to your economy early in the game. In addition to those five basic action symbols on these action tiles, you can also find some other symbols. For example, with this one, you can increase the income of your workers by the corresponding number. Here it's two. The same applies to this type of action tile. With this one, you increase your income of money. With this one, income of victory points. With this action, you can increase any one income track by one. However, you have to pay one coin for that, and with this action, for example, you gain another achievement token, and you can find all those symbols in the rulebook. The last option on your turn is to recharge. When you recharge, you gain income from your player board, and you gain income from the last visible space on each track before this income marker. There is another limitation, the maximum amount of income is limited by the last placed action tile, so in this case you can only get income from this space, here from this one and here from this one. In this extreme case you would only be able to take the income from this space, this one and this one, because it's limited by this action tile. So from this first track you gain money, in this case it would be 10 coins and also one victory point. Then from the second track 
you gain workers, in this case you would gain 4 workers from your reserve to your personal supply and 2 additional victory points and the last track give you victory points straight away, so here 4 victory points. Then in the second step you place a milestone marker based on these achievement tokens. Here we have 5, 6, 7 achievement tokens. So you can place your achievement marker on the same space or in any lower space. If you want you can also place it on this zero space. This track has tiers based on this color, so this is the first tier, second tier, third tier, then this is the fourth, fifth and sixth tier, and you can have maximum one milestone marker in each of these tiers. However, you can have unlimited number of markers on the zero space. So let's say with seven achievement tokens, you can place your marker on number seven. If you had no tiers available, then you must place your marker on the zero space. That may happen if, for example, in the first case you would have four points, in the second one two, and with the next recharge action, again, you would only have five or six achievement tokens, then you may not place that token in those tiers, because you can only have one marker in each tier, which means you would have to go down to zero. When you place the marker to the zero space, you get one worker and two coins immediately, but you lose three victory points for each marker on this zero space. When you place the marker in the segment, which still has any Nucleum token, take that token and then place it on the map and you can put it on the power plant which doesn't have the Nucleum token yet, and when you do, take the corresponding bonus immediately. When you place the marker in this area, you gain level 3 technology immediately, and when you place it in this 40 space, you gain 9 victory points right away. Each player has 6 milestone markers available. If for any reason you would have to place the 7th one, then use any suitable alternative. When the milestone marker space becomes empty, because all players performed the recharge action at least once. Perform the King's Day scoring, it's some kind of interim scoring. The player with the marker in the highest position gains 6 victory points, which is illustrated here. The player with the marker in the second space, in the second highest position on the track, receives 2 victory points immediately. When players are tied, they both score 6 victory points, if players would be tied for the second place, they would also both or all receive two victory points. Which means that one player can actually gain victory points for the first and the second place as well, because you don't score the players, you score these milestone markers. So in this case, red player would score six victory points for the first position and two victory points for the second position too. When all these three spaces would be empty, which means all players performed the recharge action three times, that also triggers the end game condition. Then to complete the recharge action, take all your achievement tokens and discard them back to the general supply, and take all your action tiles from your player board back into your action tiles pool. The game ends when two of these five endgame conditions are met, three in a two-player game. Anytime an endgame condition is met, take one of these markers and place it in the corresponding space. For example, if all these three spaces in the milestone markers area are empty, which means all players have recharged at least three times, place one of the markers here. That indicates that one of the endgame triggers has already been achieved. The player who triggered this endgame condition is awarded these three victory points. The second trigger is when any player reaches 70 victory points during the game. Then in that case, place the endgame trigger marker here. Then when the stack of these action tiles is empty, again, place the endgame trigger marker in this area. When there are no more contract tiles available, place one of those endgame trigger markers there as well. And when any player unlocks all 8 technologies, that's another endgame trigger.
So when the actual endgame has been triggered, finish the current round, then play one final round so that all players have the same number of turns, and then the game ends. Before the final scoring, if you have any achievement tokens, you can discard them and place the milestone marker, but without any effect. So let's say here we have 16 achievement tokens. So that could be a milestone marker in this area, however there already is a milestone marker, so you can place it for example here, but no effects are triggered. Then start scoring these milestones. For each milestone marker, score the corresponding milestone tile in that segment, the segments are divided by these lines, and count how many times you have fulfilled the condition on that tile, and multiply it by the multiplier of the corresponding tier where that marker is located. Now, simply put, look at this tile, it says you score one victory point for each two railway tiles you have placed on the map. So let's say you placed seven tiles on the map, which means you scored this three times, and this three is multiplied by five. So you score 15 victory points for this marker. If that marker would be here, you would multiply this 3 by 6, so you'd score 18 victory points. However, if the marker would be here, it would be in the lower segment, so you wouldn't score this milestone tile, you would score this one, and again multiply it by 5. So if, for example, you would score this tile 5 times, and this one only 3 times, even if you have 26 achievement tokens, you may decide to place this marker to space 22, just to make sure that you apply the multiplier to this tile instead of this one. Then with the next marker, again, you perform the same scoring, and for example, if you would have the situation like this, two markers in the same segment, you score the same milestone tile, and you score it twice, with this one you would multiply it by 5, with this marker you would multiply it by 4. Don't forget that if you have any markers in the zero space, for each one you lose 3 victory points. Then score the victory points for your level 3 technology in this 8th position, if you unlocked that technology. Then score your energized buildings on the map, here you have 5 plus 6 victory points, this one has not been energized, so you don't score that one. And note that if you have any energized buildings in Praha, then you double that score. If you have any of these level 4 buildings energized, these governmental buildings, they award victory points for all buildings of that type, so not just your buildings, but all buildings of that type, energized or not, in the same network as that building, and that building also counts itself. Obviously, the network must belong to the player who owns that building, in this case it would be the yellow player. So here you would only count the buildings in this city, because this doesn't belong to yellow player. In this case, let's say, if the situation would be like this, you would also count the laboratory buildings in this area. Then if you have any of the income tracks in these last spaces, you would also score these victory points, and they don't depend on these action tiles to be located here. So in this example, you would score 10 victory points for this track and 6 victory points for this one. And then score the leftover resources for each uranium, gain one worker, as indicated on your experiment board. And then for each worker you may gain one coin, so for five workers you get five coins. And then you score one victory point for each five coins in your personal supply. Then the player with the most victory points is the winner. So that's how you play Nucleon. If you have any questions or comments I'll do my best to answer as many as I can. If you like the series please subscribe, you can support the channel on the Patreon page, you've been watching Game in a Nutshell, my name is Branislav Beret and hope to see you next time. I would like to thank everyone who has ever supported the channel and especially the current supporters listed on this page. 
If you too would like to support the channel in creation of videos like this and other video tutorials and other content on this channel, please visit the patreon.com slash